next experiment five. Firstly, you use the side wave that have a frequency of two kilohertz as the master signal. You should know that the output is the inward signal. Next, we add its cell to itself. It can be seen that the output has peak to peak about x volts because we add the two signals with peak to peak four volts together. Furthermore, its maximum amplitude is about four volts. This experiment want you to know that the gain can be adjusted. Yeah, experiment 5 is done. Let's go to experiment 6. This multiplier module will be used in this experiment. Next, we will multiply the message signal and carrier signal. You will be seen that the message signal of Imona teams is a side wave that have a frequency of 2 kHz. Thus, you connect it to the input of the multiplier and display it on the oscilloscope. You will see the side wave that has the maximum amplitude and the peak to peak are 2 ones and 4 ones respectively. Then the cold side wave will have a frequency of 100 kHz is used as the carrier signal. When we compare the two signals, it is found that their amplitude are equal, but the frequencies are different. After that, the carrier signal will be multiplied by the message signal. Then we observe the output of the multiplier. It can be seen that the message signal envelopes the output signal which correspond to the theory. Let's add demonstrate something. If we disconnect the message signal, it will be difficult to detect the output. Okay, and next experiment 67 this experiment involves phase shifter in the theory we put the phase shifter button in the imuna team then we use the message signal as the input of the phase shifter and display this signal on the oscilloscope. You will see the side wave which has the maximum amplitude and the peak to peak are 2 and 4 volts respectively. Next, the output of the phase shifter will be shown on the oscilloscope. It will be seen that the output is the message signal that is shifted first to the light. Moreover, we can shift the phase by rotating on the phase shifter and can also shift the phase 
180 degrees. Yeah, finish experiment seven. Okay, go on to experiment eight. We will introduce using the r o p a r filter in this experiment. This is a tunable r o p a r filter module. Okay, put it in the a m o n a team. Later, we connect the. Message to the input of the module, and show this signal on the oscilloscope. Then we link the output of the row path filter to the oscilloscope. It is after that the output signal is shifted slightly to the right. Furthermore, the gain of r o p a r filter can be adjusted. The knob that is labeled tune is the cost of frequency of the filter. If we assume that the knob is set at 10 kHz, so that means any signals that have a frequency of less than 10 kHz. Can part this filter. On the other hand, any signals that have a frequency of greater than 10 kHz cannot part the filter. Therefore, if we load the knock until the signal does not appear, that means the knock has a c u s t o f frequency of less than 2 kHz. But if we turn it back, the signal a p p a r that means the c u s t o f frequency is more than 2 kHz. Okay, finish experiment eight. Finally, we come to the last experiment. We use the VCO module in this experiment. The VCO stands for the Voltage Control Oscillator. Okay, put the VCO module in the Imona team. Then the variable DC is connected to the VCO. And link the output of VCO to the oscilloscope. The frequency of the output signal will depend on its output. If we change the input, the frequency of the output is also changed. After that, we connect the input in the oscilloscope. It is found that the input signal have a frequency of about 600 Hz. If we reduce the voltage of input by low the delta V, the frequency of the output is increased. Whereas if we increase the voltage, the frequency is decreased. In conclusion, the voltage can control the frequency output of VCO. Moreover, we can adjust the frequency of VCO by rotating this knob. Whoa! The first part of rap one is done.